Dr. Schmidt? Well, the geopolitical significance of space hasn't changed since the Apollo program was conceived. Eisenhower and Kennedy both uh, recognized that the world was changing very rapidly in the middle of the Cold War. Uh, Eisenhower, by beginning the uh, construction of what became the Saturn V and working with McCormick and Johnson, uh, House and Senate leaders to uh, uh, build NASA, to create NASA, uh, and then uh, setting the stage for uh, uh, really 18 months uh, before Kennedy could make his, uh, made, actually made his announcement after Al Shepard's uh, successful flight and his challenge, issued his challenge to go to the moon uh, and return safely to Earth. Uh, that it, geopolitical environment really hasn't changed. Uh, if the United States expects to be the primary protector of freedom on this planet, uh, I don't think we can afford to be looking into the future to headlines that Gene implied that uh, says uh, China has landed on the moon and has established a base. Uh, that's not going to work. If, you're if one of your primary uh, functions in this world, geopolitical functions, is to protect freedom. Uh, so uh, I, I think we have to very seriously, as a country, uh, whatever the leadership does, we have to very seriously, as a country, consider the fact that space leadership is an absolute necessity uh, for the country. And uh, if we don't, uh, decide to lead, then I think we're going to be in uh, pretty serious trouble. Now, can NASA take on a task of deep space exploration today? Probably not. I think so. Uh, it, for one thing, as I indicated earlier, it's too old. The average age of NASA is twice what it was during Apollo. Uh, that uh, people have learned how to fail. They've learned how to just hold a job. Uh, all due respect and the great things that NASA has done and some and still does, it probably should disperse those functions that it has today uh, into other agencies, continue to take care of our international obligations uh, relative to the International Space Station, and we do have obligations. But if you're going to have a deep space exploration program, then I think you need a new agency. And that agency has to be configured so it can, it can last indefinitely with young people running it, the inside of it. There'll be older people. We were in our 30s. Uh, the senior managers may have been in their 40s, but I'm talking about people in their 20s have to be. And if you want an example of where we have done that successfully, it's in the management of the nuclear navy. The nuclear navy that protects the freedom of this uh, country continually is a young navy. The average age on those uh, submarines and carriers is less than 25. And they, the, the, they, they understood, Rick Over put into place early on a mechanism by which that Navy stayed young. Extraordinarily important. And you know, Captain Lovell, you and I have talked about this where, you know, when I was a young person and watching you all fly in space, there was a tremendous sense of wonder in the United States that you all were carrying that for us, but we got to watch. And you and I have talked about this. Nothing's really replaced that now that that's all gone away for America. They don't have anything else to latch on to that was quite like that. Well, you're absolutely right. We, we, need, uh, we need a new mission, so to speak, something that we can latch on to. And Jack is right, too, the, the, his uh, looking at what we are now with NASA, there needs to be some changes to be evolved here. Uh, because uh, our appropriations is really not appropriate for programs of such magnitude. You have to, if you commit yourself, for instance, to build a new aircraft carrier, uh, and you put the funds in for it, which is gonna take seven or eight years to complete, you can't pull away the funds when the ship's half built. In the same way with the space program. If you wanna go back to the moon, and we have to make those basic decisions you know, now and, ski and keep to them, then you fund them. Because I've learned that in, in, in Congress, much to my surprise, there are two different parts. One of authorizes, which is very easy to do, and one is funding, which is very difficult, if not impossible, to accomplish. And, and consequently, some things have to be changed if we're to have a viable 
position in space and be a leader in that uh, particular it, discipline. It, Phil, one of the things I think that's missing in young people today, and it's probably our fault to some degree, uh, is, is the passion, the desire, the understanding of what American exceptionalism means to us individually and to a country collectively. Probably the, the, the apex, the, the epitome of American exceptionalism came when Jim flew to the moon on Apollo 8. No human beings had ever been to the moon. The world looked at us like they've never looked at us. Oh, Apollo 11 was important, certainly, but, but Apollo 8, we went, we sent, America sent three human beings to the moon. And what did that lead to? I find young men and young women, we all do, that in their 40s and 50s today, saying, I saw that. I saw you go to the moon. You're so sure you did. I look at their age, your dad, you're, you're, you were in your diapers, your dad put you in front of the television and said, watch this, someday you're gonna say you saw him go to the moon. But, but the important thing is, they come up to that, you hear it all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Lovell. Thank you, Jack Schmidt. Thank you, Gene Cernan, for what you did for me. I'm a doctor. I'm a teacher. I'm an engineer. I'm a scientist. I'm an astronomer because of what you did. It wasn't what we did. And these are 50, 40 and 50 year old people. It's what the country did. And yes, we need the funding. Yes, we need stability. Yes, we need leadership. But we need the passion, the desire. We've never been a country, a nation in my lifetime that's ever accepted second best. Until now, until now. And that's what's missing. We need to reestablish the passion of what America, of what growing up in America is all about. Now, the real, space, let me just say, space, Space is the most visible thing we can put our hands on that instills that kind of passion in young people. And there's nothing out there today. There, there's nothing there. Space station, wonderful scientific laboratory in space. I don't quite frankly really know what it's doing or what it's sending back. Maybe we'll find a cure for cancer. I do know it's a great asset and it's very important. But it didn't turn anybody on. Katie, you want to go to the moon? Sure you do. <laughs> sure you do. But there isn't anything that excites Katie because we're not going to the moon. We need to get, we need to get people excited. We need to give this younger generation that Jack talks about something to hang their hat on, some goal. I, I, I would just add to that, Gene, that in order to accomplish what you have described and would like to accomplish, I really think there has to be a counter-revolution in education. The education system overall, with many exceptions, but still overall in this country, is failing to give young people the tools, the intellectual tools they need in order to understand what it means to be exceptional, how to be exceptional, and what it is going to take for the country as a whole to be exceptional. And until we get control of that education system, back, and I don't mean we, I mean parents get control of that education system again, uh, I, I don't see how we're going to establish the exceptionalism, the spirit of exceptionalism that Gene has talked about. 